Hello everybody and welcome back to Medieval Total War in our Holy Roman Empire Glorious Achievements campaign. Now in the last episode we saw the beginning and end of our war with the French who uh, attacked us and then uh, threw themselves on our spears. I mean it was a little more complicated than that but, but basically we, uh, we eliminated the faction in a defensive battle which is of course very fun uh, and the kind of thing you, you just don't see in the later games. Um, that's one thing that, that I really do like about this, going back to the original Medieval Total War. It's a lot swingier. I mean, and there are good and bad elements to that, but uh, you can have a battle outcome that is incredibly impactful uh, for either your campaign or the campaign of one of your rivals. Uh, and in this case, you know, the French king, I think, attacked us up here in Friesland, uh, and and uh, he didn't have any other heirs. Now, the thing I should say about that is that while the French are eliminated, they are technically, uh, you know, a rebel faction currently, that does not mean that that is the last we have seen of the French as a faction. The game actually tracks underage heirs. So if the French king had a, uh, a son who was, you know, eight years old, you know, one year old, something like that, uh, that's still being tracked in the background. And when he comes of age, there may be an opportunity for this faction to reemerge. That can happen if there is a territory that was once held by the French, which is, I believe the number is below 120 public order. So to give an example, uh, looking at our loyalty, that's what they call public order here. The loyalty of the province of Bavaria is at 129%. Uh, the loyalty of Swabia is 147. Um, Lorraine is 169. So basically, there is all these different potential loyalties. Now here, you'll notice that all these rebel settlements, it defaults to 100. And you'd think that's perfect. It's not exactly perfect. Uh, you can have a rebellion, I believe, just like a bandit rebellion at either at exactly 100 or at 99 or below, but more importantly, a faction can re-emerge at anything either at or below 120% loyalty. So if we start conquering over here, uh, we have to keep that in mind, that this is French territory. There may be discontentment that we can't quite detect, and although the province may be over 100% happiness, there may be some disaffected nobles who are looking for an opportunity. Uh, and the same may occur, by the way, if this place um, gets below, uh, you know, 120% loyalty. This was once held by the French as well. The French held Brittany at some point. Um, they may have temporarily held other places around here, so we just don't know. And that makes it all very kind of unpredictable and exciting. But um, in terms of the glorious achievements, the French are now gone from this list. Uh, they may, if they do reemerge, they will be given this uh, blank shield space. Uh, and as factions emerge over the course of the campaign, they will be added to this. Uh, there are some faction emergences that can happen. Um, I believe we're looking at the Swiss and the Burgundians. I don't know if the Mongolians will, uh, will show up uh, on the Glorious Achievements roster. Uh, they may. But let's, uh, let's now turn to the, uh, the immediate future here. We need to sort of think about how we're going to handle this. We are uh, attempting a bribery here. Uh, of this army. We'll see if this works out. Um, and if we do take it, we need to be ready to move in. So I guess we should probably just train uh, some units that we can use for that purpose. Um, I know that these are not really good units, but we can kind of afford to train some, you know, some, I guess, less good stuff because we're doing pretty decent uh, in terms of our income right now. Uh, 12, 12, yeah. So let's just go for end turn. Okay, the French are attacking that rebel settlement. Yep, or the uh, the English rather. So they're moving in on this pretty quickly. Okay, good. They've decided they cannot win. They're retreating. And the English have taken Ile de France. Okay, the bribery is going to need to be increased. This very frequently happens when you attempt a bribery of a rebel stack or really any stack. The, they can give you one number, uh, an estimate, and when the, the emissary gets closer, when it comes right down to it, they may increase their demand. So now 1760. We can continue with our initial offering. We can raise the offer. Or we can just abandon the bribe. I'm going to raise the offer and see if that works. This may not work anyway. Yes. Okay, good. So the bribe is accepted. The army will attempt to join your forces. It will be ready to command next year. Okay. 
Uh, we've got some people uh, being trained, and so they're being given traits. Uh, Lord Von Holland is a hedonist, minus one valor, which is uh, not that good, but he is pious. Ah, right. All right, as the uh, little trumpet flourish indicates, we have achieved one of the stages at which victory uh, conditions or glorious achievement points are counted. Uh, so the homelands achievement, the first, uh, the first section of that basically is completed. We have just scored 13 points. We'll look at that in a moment. But I really like looking at this, uh, this game art. It very rarely shows up. It's kind of CGI, isn't it? Uh, and, you know, it's, it's not my favorite stuff ever, but it was what we had at the time. So I was always interested to see um, how it was handled. Okay, so with that, let's take a look at our glorious achievements. And we are not winning, but we're doing okay. Uh, the Almohads are ahead of us. Uh, let's see. So that would be 14 points, I think. And uh, yeah, right, obviously they're at 14 now. But basically, if they... Um, if they continue this again, they'll have 28 next next turn. We'll have 26. So they'll continue to get further ahead unless something happens. Uh, we're tied with the Byzantines, who I think lost some territory, actually. We'll have to see if they're at war with anybody. Uh, the Danes haven't really done much, although they have conquered. They've conquered a single settlement, a single province. That's probably Sweden. Uh, the Egyptians... The Egyptians are... It, it's very unfortunate. They don't do too well in terms of glorious achievements in my experience. It seems like they should do a lot better uh, because they've got some interesting goals and they can be a, a very large faction. But we'll have to watch out for the English. Uh, they've got all of their homelands. They're almost tied with us. And if they do some more conquering, then, uh, then they, they may pull ahead. The Italians are tied. Polish we don't need to worry about too much, but of course they may just attack us and uh, they may conquer a lot into the east which we won't have a lot to say about and we're tied with the hungarians who have been conquering they've got three provinces under their belt okay let's now take a look at diplomacy uh yeah okay the turks and the byzantines so that is the only war currently and the turks have the alliance of the egyptians as well as the sicilians uh okay so the byzantines are are kind of losing that war it looks like now, uh, the year is 1100, so homelands, as it says, are counted in these years. So 1100 was the first year. So we've got basically 25-year intervals uh, before points are accumulated again. Uh, and let's see, conquest is exactly the same years. Uh, crusades are a little bit different, so they're counted between those particular dates. Um, we do need to get going on that. We are working towards that goal. Uh, Swabia is working on a sword smith. Let's see. We are probably going to do a church next there. Um, but let's let's actually... We've got iron here, um, although we're a little low on cash currently. So maybe we'll just focus on troops for the moment. We also need to think about this, because the English declared their intention with regard to Flanders. And of course, uh, me bribing this is kind of a declaration of intent as well. Uh, the English typically have a very uh, good time in their home territories. There's no other major factions here. Scotland is held by rebels. Wales is held by rebels. Uh, Ireland, also in the early period, is rebel-held. So the English are going to have you know, just a, a few turns to conquer their adjacent territories. Uh, but Flanders is actually a, um, a province that you can move from Britain to the mainland. It's kind of hard to see, but there's this line here indicating... You know, not a land bridge, but a, basically a crossing. You can see that type of thing over here that suggests that you can move between Denmark and Sweden without needing to go through the whole uh, process of transporting units by ship, which works very differently in this game than it does in the, in the later 3D games. Uh, but here's another one, right? You can go from Grenada to Morocco. You can go from Cordoba to Morocco. Uh, Sicily can just move freely between Sicily and Italy. And uh, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, but that does mean that Flanders is really important because in the early phases of the game, the AI, well, the AI tends not to use its ships very well anyway. Uh, and so they really rely on these land crossings. Uh, and again, it's not a land crossing. It's just a, a, imagine there's always dudes with boats ready to ship people across. So that means they could just move over here uh, next turn. Now, fortunately, they don't have a lot of troops up in Wessex to do that, but they do have a lot of troops down here. Now, 
Ile de France is under siege, and so uh, Paris is besieged currently. So they're not going to turn and attack us just yet, uh, but they've got a nice a nice general here, and they've got you know quite a few units. They tend to train up these uh, light cavalry hobelars. So um, we'll need to beef up our own defenses and start shuffling troops over. Um, the other thing is Flanders. Oh, okay. Actually, there's nobody in the city, which is great. We'll just take over the settlement. Um, we've got a bunch of rebels. We've got, we've got a few archers as part of this deal. Let's go ahead and move, um, uh, let's see, one of the princes. Let's move Ludwig over. Conrad is our heir. Let's kind of leave him uh, back. I think I want to move him maybe down to down to Burgundy. That seems like kind of an important place. And, yeah, let's just take all of these people, move them up to Flanders. Uh, okay, we're neutral with the rebels, which is odd, but sure. That gives us a bunch of spearmen. Uh, we'll need to lower Lorraine in terms of taxes. And I think I kind of want to keep these guys here because I'm a little concerned about the English. But let's move men from Swabia. And public order again is looking quite good everywhere. Okay. Loyalty also is looking pretty decent for our generals. Um, this is a problem though. We've got this uh, the king of the Poles, King Ladislaw I, and a uh, mighty warrior and a builder. So he's going to be tough to deal with. If they decide to just attack, of course, that could be disastrous. So let's um, let's just sh let's just keep some peasants around, I guess. Friesland will do the same. We'll keep these guys kind of ready to reinforce. And Franconia, I think now though, I'm I'm thinking about moving them up towards Brandenburg. Silesia doesn't look like it's uh, developing into much of a threat, uh, but Pomerania could certainly strike out and hit either Saxony or Brandenburg. So we need to kind of be ready for that. Um, I will go with a keep and curtain wall here. This adds, instead of, you can kind of tell there's like wooden walls around the, uh, the, the castle itself. This turns those into stone, basically. And it means that individual infantry can't just run up to them and start hacking them down because now they're made of stone. So the only way to go in will be through the gate. Or if the uh, attackers bring siege equipment like ballistas and catapults and so on. Uh, typically the AI, well, they may build some of that stuff, but in the early stage, uh, they tend not to have a lot of that available, so they'll just be rushing the gatehouse, um, and if you can hold that with some decent infantry, then you're in a pretty good position. So, speaking of that, let's take a look at mercenaries now. Okay, there's nothing really special. It's just the stuff I can already train. Uh, but let's go for some Slav warriors. Always use some of those guys. Hungarians don't seem like too much of a threat. Well, I guess we'll, we'll give it a turn and see how the bribery works out. I'd like to keep building, but I also need to uh, keep my funds available. All right, so the Polish king looks like he went east, probably attacking a rebel settlement there. All right, the Flanders are retreating. Okay, so we do have a siege, unfortunately. I don't know exactly how that happened. There was no one in the castle, but I guess they trained somebody. Okay, wonderful. He's just giving me a... Uh, a princess for no real reason we're already allied um, but that that indicates to me that the Aragonese are actually not interested at war in war with us so this is our second uh, son Prince Ludwig and I'll take it it's not a bad thing at all okay the English are trying to uh, marry our princess that is let's see is that gonna give us an alliance with them I can't remember Let's do it because I honestly can't remember how this works. Now, it, it sort of uh, says a, a scary thing down here. It says, um, if your line is eliminated, they, the English, may gain some claim to your lands. That sounds a little threatening, but of course, if your line is eliminated, your faction is done and the game is over. So that's not really a huge deal. Um, the bigger problem is that you lose a princess Right, and she can be used to spy out different territories or set up other alliances. I'm just going to go with it for now. We'll see if it gets us an alliance with the English. Okay, Lord Utenheim is strange. Fair enough. Uh, do we have an ally? 
We do. Okay, so I think that was worth it. Now, I guess that does bring up the question of what our alliance is worth in this game, really. Um, and I guess we will find out, won't we? So, taking a look at our heirs. Yep, we've got another princess coming along in about, you know, 10 or 12 years. She'll be of age. A few more years, we'll have uh, Prince Rudolph. Uh, so, we've got a few more uh, people coming up. And Flanders, we can get right to very high taxes. This is uh, a three-year siege we're looking at. I think... Let's just, uh, let's be super patient here. I know, you know, it may be a bit, uh, a bit unnecessary. But I'm also curious to see what the English are looking like in terms of their rebel settlements. So we'll see what Brittany is doing. We'll see what Wales is doing. Maybe we'll go up to Scotland. Um, I imagine the English are going to move on Champagne at some point. Tyrolia is looking rather vulnerable. But I think we've only got the two emissaries. Um, let's go for another one because I kind of want to have someone down here just in case we need a, a quick bribery or a quick uh, alliance with a faction in the south of us. So uh, this is flashing because our glorious achievements have reset. So after the year in which they are counted, um, you'll typically see the uh, the goblet there start to flash, indicating that you've got some, some maybe some different uh, homelands, some different goals. So it's always worth checking that when it starts to flash. In this case, uh, everything looks the same. We've got the same number of points. Uh, conquest is the same ratio. Five provinces gives us a single point there. And we've got all the Crusades. Uh, some of these other factions may have different goals, uh, but not, not really uh, a big concern. Let's go with the Church in Swabia. And yeah, we do need to start working on income, actually. So let's kind of hold off on uh, building or training unless it can get us some cash. I'm always wary about spending uh, investments in Provence because it's just far enough away from our territories that I feel like someone could take it easily. Uh, improved farmland uh, is almost always a good option, but you do want to check the fertility of the province. So this is already giving us 394. This would give us 469, so that's a, you know about another 670 or so. Uh, I don't know if I don't know if this is on top of that, or if this is actually what our income would be, or if there's some other calculations that happen. But it's not a huge return. Um, let's focus on that in other places, and in fact, we're going to want to do it in places where we want to train cav because you need the improved farmland uh, to get cavalry going. So let's do that. Um, let's see. That's going to give us 248. That's really bad, actually. 208. That's that's not great. Uh, but I think we may want to do it anyway because it's got iron, and um, that will that'll be a place where we will want to train some military units. Okay. It looks like the uh, the invasion of not Pomerania but Prussia went well for the Poles. Okay, Spanish have achieved an unheard of level of development. Their technological achievements are unsurpassed. So this means, I think, that they've got the most buildings. <clears throat> or they've done the most uh, building upgrades in total. And I'm not sure if this looks at a particular province and compares that individual province to all the other provinces on the map. And if your faction has the province with the most upgraded buildings, then you get this little message. This is useful, though, because it tells you, I think this tells you where the king is located, uh, where that faction leader is. So he's in Valencia. Now, that doesn't really matter right now, but it may be useful later on. Right, three more years in Flanders. Okay, just some, uh, some vices and virtues. At a certain point in the campaign, and we may already have reached it, those vices and virtues uh, start to become a little annoying to track. Uh, so it's not something that we're going to always be observing. It's a really neat system, uh, but the fact that they trigger for every single unit uh, means that, well, it's just a pain to check all of them. So you want to have a general idea of, like, who are your lords, who are your important governors, who's disloyal. Uh, fortunately, those things are not going to change super quick. All right, Leah, let's go for salt in Saxony. We also want to start training uh, eventually up here. But we'll call that good for now. Oh, and I forgot to move my emissaries as is usual. Put 
can see that Brittany is still uh, rebel held, but very good news for us. This is going to distract the Poles. So uh, popular unrest in Pomerania. Awesome. Maybe we could actually take advantage of that. Oh, yeah. Okay. So it's it's not so much public order in this case, but it's just that they had too few men. They've got their king and some mounted crossbowmen. Oh, they're probably gonna they're probably gonna do just fine with this. It's it's a, uh, a rebellion of Slav javelin men. So these are, um, you know, they're skirmisher units, and that means they're gonna get pushed easily by cav. And uh, skirmishing away is gonna make them fight less effectively. They're gonna be uh, scared. So I think the poles are gonna hold on to this. Uh, but at least it's going to give them some pause, I suppose. Let's move uh, the slot spearmen up there. And yeah, let's go with a couple more. That's costing us 200. We got our farming up in, in uh, Franconia. And uh, yeah, 248. I think that's exactly what it said it was going to be. So let's go for some more building here. Now we can build a horse farmer, which doesn't get us anything by itself, but allows us to start working on stables. But... Uh, but let's do um, let's do spears. That's what's going to allow us um, to get the iron upgrades and the better units and everything. All right, who are all these guys? They're all fine, actually. One thing though, you do want to keep track of is if you're putting your prince or your king in charge of a stack of other of, of you know any other units, their vices and virtues will filter upward. They will bubble up to the man on top. So he's loyal which is nice. Um, he doesn't have any other traits. That's good. But say there's a guy over here with um, like the hedonist trait. If I put my prince on top of this stack and the prince ends up uh, you know, taking precedence here, then I may get these traits. So traits are contagious and they, they go upward to the general who's commanding. And that's not just for the guy who's in charge of this stack, that's for pretty much anybody, I think, who's in this stack who may have vices or virtues. So you want to kind of keep an eye on those because there could be um, there could be some side effects. Let's try an alliance with the Italians. We're already allied with the English. Wales is looking, uh, looking really underdeveloped, which is nice. I can't, unfortunately, see what they have for buildings here yet, but I think I don't know if Watchtower is here will allow me to see, and it'll be an interesting experiment. Uh, but Wales has nothing, so theoretically, if I got a spy in here, I could drive down the loyalty uh, fairly easily. So Brittany remains rebel. The English don't seem to have done much to take this. I, you know, part of me wants this uh, this general because... Okay, so he's a blackmailer, but he's a man of principle. So someone's been trying to bribe this guy, probably the uh, the English. So I'll probably just leave that go. I, I, I don't want to um, get involved with that that situation. Let's go down to see Navarre. It's either Spanish or Aragonese at this point. I think it starts uh, held by the rebels. Ile de France has fallen. All right, looks like the Aragonese are moving troops around in and out of Toulouse. All right, Hungary offers an alliance. Yeah, I think I think I'll take it. There's no reason not to. We've got another son. Lord Plittersdorf is honest. Very nice. Lord von Dassel is a builder. Also very good. Let's just check the heirs. Uh, yeah, next turn we're going to have Prince Rudolf uh, coming of age. Ooh, the rebels actually won. Wow. Okay. Well, we've got our emissary going down to try for an alliance with the Italians. The next thing I could try to do, theoretically, is try for an alliance with the, the Poles. Um, the one thing you can do with an alliance is use your men to, uh, uh, to, to sort of work in tandem with another faction's military. You can show up as reinforcements on the battlefield. Okay, the Spanish own at Navarre. Uh, and what that will do is... Let's actually get down to Serbia here. What that will do is uh, you can have allies on the battlefield. You can betray them on the battlefield, which is awesome. That's something I don't think you can do in Rome, unfortunately. 
uh, but you can sort of do some weird stuff. Like, for example, if I were Italian, uh, if I were allied with, with, the, uh, with the Poles here, I could move an army into Pomerania. Uh, it's held by the rebels, so I could actually do this right now. I'd not be declaring war with the Poles, but if I won the battle, uh, actually, would they be showing up as reinforcements? I don't know. They might. So I, I possibly could be at war uh, with the Poles very soon. So, But if I were allied, uh, we would show up together. And if you invade a country at the same time as your ally, then you both can work against the enemy. So it's kind of neat, but it doesn't come up all that often. There are a few cases, though, where it can be useful. All right. Let's just see. This is going to fall like any time here. The other thing is, if Champagne doesn't um, doesn't stop being rebel, if one of us doesn't grab this, this may be a place where uh, the French will just reemerge. Same thing with Brittany. So we kind of, if, if we want to avoid a French reemergence, we want to make sure that those are uh, those are all settled. Okay, I'm not sure that I want to invest anything into Lorraine. Friesland, though, probably a good idea. Feels a bit high to go for uh, for a port. Let's go with the town watch. Yeah, see, the Poles were definitely going to reinforce, and they're probably going to win that battle, I would think. All right, we got Flanders. Uh, we pillaged uh, 400 worth of Florins, so that added to our treasury, and we've destroyed three facilities, which means that the fort is now gone. And there's at least two other buildings that are now gone. The port may be there when we get back to it. All right, Prince Rudolph. We now have three heirs. And knighthood. Chivalry uh, helps to spread the Catholic faith more widely. All right, Prince Rudolph. Ooh, now we're getting some bad traits. Chinless wonder. Perhaps one or two of this man's close ancestors were a little too close, resulting in an unconventional family tree. Minus one acumen, minus one command. These kinds of traits I always hate. Um, because and, and this happens, this is true for every basically every Total War game. There's a certain kind of randomness um, of, with how traits are assigned, and they just might not make sense. Uh, if you, you may have been carefully pruning your family tree for generations and then get something like this. Uh, and there's no reason for it, it's just totally random. Uh, so this is gonna this is bad and it's going to get worse and, and unfortunately uh, he starts off with three command stars he's a natural leader so that's good it overcomes some of this yeah Lord von Lothring is crack brained so that uh, started off as strange this is now getting worse it's hurting the happiness in his province so we'll need to check that Prince Conrad is now lazy I think he was a hedonist and uh, now he is lazy yeah so traits um, can get better over time, but more frequently they get worse. This guy should probably be the governor of some place, but I don't think I have any uh, any spare. Well, actually, I've got one over here. I've got Flanders. Do I want to put a Slav spearman in charge of Flanders? That uh, you know. Let's put this guy. He's got four acumen. Ooh, this gives three. Ooh. Maybe I should save this for someone who's like, you know, like a really good general. I think at some point, um, and, and you may get some really good generals just by training uh, characters, uh, because there are famous characters who appear on the map. Right, so we're looking at, okay, that actually helps our income, 991. we got to build in uh, Flanders. We've got a port here, uh, but that's not doing us any good until we can... You know, get some other facilities. So that's four. Uh, we've got 500 we could still spend. All right, these guys are both pretty decent. Yeah, Pomerani's back to uh, back to its normal self. Let's move these guys over. You know, let's move them down to Austria, actually. I'm a little concerned. You know, the Italians seem content now, but you just never know. All right, we've got a church in Swabia. This now means we've got a Catholic bishop. So this is basically a priest unit. Uh, you can move them around the uh, the campaign map. Oh, we can also train feudal men at arms because we got our swordsmith. Nice. 
I think I'll actually start doing that. Let's uh, let's go with a few of these guys. Maybe we'll get some good units out of it. Um, uh, get some good generals or family members. Let's see. Okay, Chapter House. This allows our Crusades. Uh, basically, this is where you get the the orders of uh, you know the Crusading orders, right? Uh, the Templars, the Hospitallers. For us, we're going to be uh, given um, well Teutonic Knights, right? So let's do this. It's a little risky because chapter houses, uh, if they are destroyed, uh, can really hurt your king's influence, I believe. Uh, so, or they can end the crusade. So basically you don't want to lose them, but Swabi is pretty safe. All right, I think that'll be a good point to end the turn. Okay, largest military. Sufism. All right, so Turkish provinces are going to see an increase in uh, Islamic faith. King of the Danes has sent an offer of alliance. Yes. Uh, hmm. How about no, actually? Because I can see there's a princess here. I'll hold off for a little while. All right, the Italians do not want to ally with us. Um, what I'd like to do, the Danes do tend to have a lot of princesses running around the map. Uh, what I'd like to do is is get one of them as a marriage for my next heir. Now, this is going to mean waiting a little while. Conrad II is 49. Uh, he's got, you know, maybe 10 or who knows, maybe 20, 30 years left. But when he dies, I'm going to see who's the next heir. And I may not have that many, right? Like, cause some of these guys are going to maybe die in battle, maybe die of old age. And, um, and this this is going to change. This is where you do kind of wish that, uh, that this game had a an actual family tree that told you exactly who was the, the father of who. Uh, because as the king dies, as my current emperor dies, these guys are going to remain on as princes. Conrad is going to take over as the heir. That's why he's red. Uh, but we'll still have his younger brothers. And some of these guys may even be his sons. Uh, Prince Lothair might be his son because um, Conrad is married. Okay, we know the Italians don't want an alliance, but uh, what about the Pope? Let's give that another shot. Make sure we're on the Pope and not the, uh, not the Egyptians. Okay, so he's on a mission. Uh, our embassy here in Northumbria. Let's go up to Scotland, sure. And Serbia, right. Okay, so this is Hungarian territory. I think Bulgaria starts off in the hands of the Byzantines initially. We can take a look at that. Okay, so the Pope is not interested. Oh yeah, and typically the Byzantines have big armies and really, really excellent generals. This is Alexius I, a field defense specialist, magnificent builder and steward. I mean, is it any wonder that I became such a Byzantine fan, uh, primarily as a result of playing this game? This is, I think that was the first faction I tried. Uh, and then these guys just have awesome stats right out of the gate. Um, and they gave him some really nice traits too. Uh, but the Byzantines tend to fall apart uh, in some other ways. Let's go up to Moldavia, see how Poland or Hungary is doing, because that's a rebel settlement at first. And here, I think, if, the, if you want to find a place to park your emissary, typically you want it to be in a place that has uh, a port, or you want it to be on the other side of a faction you're trying to keep an eye on. So let's do that. Let's bring him, let's see, yeah, let's bring him over to Brittany. And he'll just kind of hang out there to see when and if the English take this uh, rebel settlement. Scotland has not fallen yet, so that's uh, really interesting. All right, I don't want to keep him here, though. We'll just keep him in Northumbria for the moment. All right, now we've got a little a little more cash. Rudolf. Um, let's bring Rudolf up. We'll bring him up to uh, up to Saxony, I guess. And I'm curious to see if the Danes have taken Norway. Doesn't look like it yet. Okay, 
so Saxon, yeah, let's do salt mine here. All right, Poles going to Volhynia. You can kind of tell when they move, if the sword is raised, if they're moving in sort of an active pose, that means they're attacking. And Byzantines are the richest, of course. And we've got Prince Harriman. He is irritable. That's actually not bad. Plus one dread. Uh, dread, by the way, is a stat that I forgot to mention uh, in the first episode when I went over all of these things. Uh, dread, and it doesn't ex really explain what these do. Uh, dread works differently in the first game than it did in Medieval 2. In Medieval 2, this has an impact on the battlefield for enemy morale, which is very cool. Uh, in this one, it does not. In this one, it is a basically a uh, an enforcement stat. It's it's a little weird because it doesn't work um, like exactly in opposition to piety or anything. You can have both of these be really high. Uh, you can be really dreadful and really pious and really loyal and and everything else. It basically improves the happiness of the local population. So if you put a high dread governor in charge of a uh, of, of a of a province, you give him the lordship, uh, then they're going to be cowed. Their loyalty is going to increase essentially. Um, I think that's basically it. Now, there may be other stuff going on under the hood of this game in terms of how Dread interacts with stuff like the odds of a general starting a civil war or a rebellion, uh, because there are calculations that determine that sort of thing, too. Uh, and I don't know all of the ins and outs of it. You can tell I'm, just, tell I'm just leaving Brandenburg to sort of twist in the wind here because I'm just not sure what to do with it. I mean, it does have some good trade resources, but it's not... Uh, it, it's not on the sea, so we can't really benefit from that to a great extent. It feels vulnerable, because you can attack it from three different places. Uh, the Poles can, anyway. So investing in, in the income for it just doesn't seem all that helpful. But let's go with some basic stuff, some basic defenses. Uh, freeze land, let's see. You know, it's been a little while. Let's go for a keep in Lorraine. I'm not intending to go too far west here. I might take Champagne at some point. I'm not rushing for it. Uh, but after a few years, once I've got stuff kind of settled in Flanders, if the English don't move on it, then, you know, then I will. But I don't mind having my western border be a little over-fortified, I guess. All right, our chapter house is complete. Oh, no! Oh, okay. This is this is actually pretty decent. Um, so they've got a tiny, tiny force in Champagne, a huge, massive force over in Brittany. Well, that's awesome. Awesome news. I always love to see this. So an heir of the last ruling lineage who escaped detection has organized a rebellion in an attempt to reestablish his faction. And, um, and other places can just join in. So the rebels who were in Champagne um, have just declared for the French, which makes sense. They were French. And uh, we've got just that one province and this. I think that's the total of the French Rebellion. Um, uh, no, I don't think I need to ally with the Almohads. There's not really any purpose for it. Okay, the Poles want an alliance. Yeah, why not? Yeah, unhinged loon. Strange. Uh, I can't remember what the next step was, but now he's gone to the third stage, unhinged loon. Prince Ludwig is very loyal, very good. Now, we're not currently at war with the French. We were when they were, uh, you know, under under the previous dynasty. Uh, and now, you can see that they're back to their glorious achievements with nothing. And they've only got, they're only going to get a single homeland. Um, they'll probably take Brittany. So it'll be really interesting to see how this develops. Uh, they're going to have to fight this force, which was their, uh, their forces initially. They didn't declare for the rebellion, apparently. Um, and it looks like they've got a lot of, you know, low mid-tier stuff. They do have a lot of feudal sergeants, but they don't have any very skilled commanders. And this is their king, King Louis VI, 21 years old, two influence. So, I mean, you know, he's no traits. He does have another unit of royal knights with him um, and a lot of spearmen. So the English are going to be the ones bearing the brunt of this. I'm just going to hold off and see what happens. Uh, Champagne is... You know, I don't know if it's worth it. I could take this and then have pretty much an immediate ceasefire if I move quickly enough. But the problem is, as you can see, this is not really going to advance my border at all. 
because Ile de France can move right into Lorraine just as they can move into Champagne. So if I take this, I'm not really protecting Lorraine. I'm just adding another province that I need to defend. You know, that said, it, why not at some point, right? But I feel at this point it's more important to... Um, oh, now we got some interesting stuff. Yes, please, Vikings for sure. Uh, Italian infantry, 124. It seems a little steep, but let's go with it. Uh, let's put them all under... Make sure they don't have any traits we got to worry about. Yeah, Prince Conrad. The, uh, the, the heir to the throne. And now, yeah, Herman. Oh my gosh, this guy's fantastic. So I think every two command stars increases your guy's traits by like one step. So where do we want to move him? Probably over to Flanders. We're allied with a lot of these people, but... Um, you know, in, in the uh, the English and, and uh, the Aragonese, but we may be at war soon, either with them or with the French. All right, now that we've got our chapter house, we have an interesting build option in Swabia. We've got a crusade. Um, this acts as a unit, actually, not a building. Uh, it puts a cross marker on our map, and then we can use it to target someplace. Uh... Yeah, let's go for it. Let's let's build it. And uh, that's going to take us four seasons to get a crusade up and running. Uh, meantime, we can build some other stuff. I don't know if there's much point in going for uh, feudal sergeants, but we may want to go for a castle. Let's go, let's go for income first, and then we'll get going on a castle, because in order to get some really nice units, we need to get to that level of development. Uh, but let's go, let's go for archers here. Uh, okay, we could throw our mercenaries into the crusade when that's done, so that's good that we've got a couple of places we can recruit guys. Um, and let's see, where else do I want to be training? Let's go with urban militia. I guess we'll go with Spearman. So four, pretty much four of everything. And yeah, let's go with some more Slavs. Now this is um, this is going to hurt our income, but once the Crusade is, is up and running, units that go on Crusade do not have to pay upkeep costs. So that's where you want to recruit all the mercenaries you can, throw them into the Crusade, and hope that that all goes well. Oh, King of Aragon has been captured and executed. Interesting. So there's a new war going on. All right. Polish king has died. These succession messages are always very dramatic. Okay. Italian. Danes. All right. They're all fallen. Okay. Ruprecht Stefan. So this sounds like a guy uh, who, like, is a famous person, a hedonist and a believer. I don't know. I don't know much about German history, so. Uh, Arnold von Lothringen. I don't know. Maybe these are just, just kind of random German names. At some point, we're going to get some pretty good guys. I think Henry the Lion comes along at some point, right? Maybe that's from a different period. But let's just keep an eye, make sure we're not getting any super disloyal guys coming out of training. And it looks like we're not. Our king's influence uh, has moved up one point. It was four, now it is five. And the Poles, now being my ally, um, seem rather content to just kind of go back to Poland. Danish king, King Olaf II is a great warrior. Again, we got a couple of uh, Danish princesses still in play. And, of course, the French took this no problem. What's that war with Aragon? Okay, they're at war with the Spanish. Well, that's not good. The Spanish can be a very, very big threat. They're at war with the Almohads, too. Oof. They're allied with the people of Novgorod. Novgorod is the faction in the early uh, era that in the other eras is actually a, a selectable, playable faction. You can't play them, unfortunately, in the early period, at least in the vanilla game. All right, the Hungarians actually moving towards uh, southern Russia, Kiev. Oh, 
Lord Plittersdorf is a drinker, not very good. Clever with words is nice. All right, let's actually um, let's move our emissary out of Northumbria, and I want to see what's going on down in. Let's check Aquitaine and then move down. Uh, th what may happen is the French may just sit tight and uh, not do anything because they're too afraid to move out. Uh, I guess that's fine. I'll kind of leave that for a little while. Let's go with a keep in Flanders. It feels a bit... Um, a bit spendy. But we really want to hold that. Okay. Plus one influence to the Byzantine Empire, thanks to the Alexiad being written. Yeah, crack brained. Okay, well, let's just check the old heirs here. We've got uh, Princess coming of age. We've got Princess Gertrude, actually, just, just became available. So let's move her down uh, into Spain. I want to see what's going on here. Okay, the English have Aquitaine. That's good. I don't want the Aragonese to have it and, you know, maybe lose it very soon. So let's go down to Navarre, and let's actually... I think we can maybe move our emissary out of Brittany over to Valencia. That's definitely Spanish territory. I just want to get a really good impression of uh, what's happening on the map. Let's take a turn off from building. You can see our projected profits are very low, uh, but the crusade is going to be done this season. All right, honorable warrior, fervent, all very nice stuff. Okay, there's our crusade marker right here in Swabia. Um, and let's go ahead and uh, let's train another of these guys. Now what we do with this is we can send it uh, to any, any target, any target that's valid. So if we lift it up, we can see that some places show up as potential targets. So every place that's highlighted in purple is a place we could theoretically crusade. All of these places are orthodox territory or pagan territory. And so they may be valid targets. We could send a crusade to Bulgaria, Constantinople. Uh, these are red because they are our, you know, holy land targets for our objectives. So these are the places we're really going to want to go for. Uh, but we could crusade in Spain if we wanted, right? So, and Naples even. Oh, that's Byzantine initially. Now, I don't know if this will work right off the bat because um, we don't have a lot of money. And sometimes crusades cost money to get going. Um, but let's see. Antioch uh, is going to give us, I think, the second most points, and it's probably the most profitable uh, province on the map. What I'm not totally sure of is who is here, uh, but that will be uh, be apparent to us relatively soon. It's, it's either the Turks or the Egyptians. Probably the Egyptians still have it. Uh, all of these may be held by the Egyptians, with the exception, perhaps, of Edessa. Palestine is going to give us the most points, but it's not the most valuable. So oftentimes I like to go to Antioch, and then from there we can stage successive crusades. All right, this belongs to the Egyptians. 1,000 florins should be enough to secure the Pope's support for this crusade. All right, so we've got to pay the Pope to, uh, to start the crusade. And there we've got actually a bunch of units. We've got a three-star general, Ludwig von Schwaben leading a, uh, a unit of Teutonic Sergeants. These are not super knights, but they are pretty decent. Uh, we've got some Order Foot Soldiers, which are pretty decent as well, kind of like Feudal Sergeants, I guess. And then we've got a bunch of fanatics, just basically peasants with clubs, uh, but they've got excellent morale, and so you use them like peasants, but use them to charge and, uh, and to not rout. So before we start moving this thing, um, well, actually, you'll notice that we don't have a lot of options with how we move it. We can go north, we can go uh, south. And what I should have done, actually, is started moving these guys uh, towards the crusade sooner. Because if you do not keep the crusade moving, um, you're, you're going to lose men. So you got to use it or lose it. 
All right, I'm going to put all of these guys right in the crusade as well. Let's take a look at our income right now. It's 56 projected profits. But if I put all of them in the crusade, that's going to go up to 191 because we're not paying upkeep for them anymore. Let's um, keep the spearmen in there for the moment. And we got some spearmen up here. I think I'm going to risk leaving this in place just so that I can get some of my guys uh, into Swabia. Let's bring a bunch of spearmen because I don't have hardly any of them. Um, we'll go with, yeah, you too. I just want to make sure they don't have any bad traits. Irritable is okay. We'll take it. So all you guys are going down into Swabia with Prince Herman. He's going to sort of lead this crusade. He's 21 years old. He's young enough. Uh, he's got enough brothers that I'm not too concerned about losing him. I'm going to move the archers up as well. Uh, these guys, let's see. You know, the fact that I can go north is interesting. I think I may do that because possibly the game is telling me I can go north to Flanders and then take a boat over to Antioch. So that could be... Um, one way we do this. Uh, let's see, we can also move all of these guys directly in. So we're going to actually have a bunch of guys uh, as part of our crusade, which is obviously what you want. Alright, I think that's all we want to do. We are, we, we are basically out of money at this point. So let's just see how this develops. Crusades are really interesting how they work. I love that you don't control them in this game exactly. You've got a few choices you can make in terms of the path of your crusade, but for the most part, uh, it is not up to you, it is up to the crusade itself. Um, the crusade numbers are going to fluctuate. They're going to go up, they're going to go down. You can see we added a bunch of guys, and what happened is they're being hoovered up from all the other units, so this is a little annoying actually. Um, but hey, this is the way it works. It's, it's a little disorganized, it's a little chaotic. Uh, there are no limits to the number of men that can go on crusade. So normally you would have, you know, 20 unit stacks. Uh, but uh, that is not the case here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, can I just merge them all. Control merge. I guess not. We'll have to do this uh, manually. But this is probably not even really worth doing, honestly, because these units are going to um, just kind of merge and change on their own. But let's see. If, let's see if it does it does play a role. Actually, never mind. It's it's getting irritating. Okay, so we'll just go up to Franconia. This is going to draw off some of these guys, uh, which is totally fine. I want them to join anyway. We've currently got two thousand thirty six men, and um, a couple of things you want to keep in mind when you're crusading is uh, so we're in Swabia. We have three provinces we could move to. If we didn't move at all, we would just gradually lose men in the crusade. They would desert. Uh, and then the crusade I maybe just canceled eventually. I can't remember, uh, but that I think would take a very long time. Um, so we've got three provinces, Franconia, Bavaria, or uh, Tyrolia. They're only going to be places that are going to advance you toward your objective uh, one way or another. And uh, you know, at certain points, you don't have a choice. You just have to go to the next place. Uh, you acquire new members of the crusade based on, to some extent, the zeal and Catholic faith of the province you're passing through. So zeal in Franconia is very high at 76, 99% Catholic. So we're going to basically get a lot of these guys uh, just joined up separate from their units anyway. But that also works with other factions. So if we move through Polish territory, like a province like Poland has pretty good zeal, 61%, 96% Catholic we could basically end up weakening, uh, like we could draw like half of these units out of here or half of the men out of these units just by our crusade passing through. Now a faction does have the option of denying your crusade passage, at which point I believe they are excommunicated automatically if they're Catholic and you are at war with them and so you would be attacking them, right? Um, and that's basically how it works. So you can sort of prepare the way for your crusade uh, and it's probably a good idea for us to get some bishops going by uh, scouting ahead, training bishops if you have inquisitors, uh, training inquisitors um, they will increase the zeal in provinces that you are going to pass through and if you send your inquisitors ahead 
uh, of a crusading army. And again, you don't know exactly where that army's going to go, so it's a bit of guesswork. Uh, if you do that, then, then you'll have much better chances of hoovering up lots more troops. Okay, we've got the French sallying out from their position in Brittany, and uh, they're, they're succeeding so far. Very good. All right, I kind of like to see that just because it injects a bit more randomness um, into the campaign. We've got four more seasons before we get a keep. I don't know that the French are going to try attacking us in Flanders. They may attack Lorraine. All right, but let's see where our crusade's going to go now. Yeah, we took basically, this is a 100-man unit. And it's all these guys have 63. So uh, the zeal here is high enough that that caused just a huge amount of damage. We're up to 2,671. Only um, only 400 of that is from those Slav spearmen. Now we have no option. <laughs> okay, now we're going to Bohemia. Okay. May as well train up another one of these guys. We're going to be having some of them join anyway. Uh, lords will not automatically join, so you're not going to have the captain or the you know the, the the governor of a province go on crusade without you're specifically declaring it. All right, yeah, we'll add these. Okay, Spain is basically hanging around here. It doesn't look like they're doing too much else. But we do want to keep an eye on like Cordoba and Aquitaine. The French may be counterattacking down there too. Income is slowly coming back. Um, let's get the uh, let's get the priest. I'm just gonna set him a target of Antioch. You can do this, by the way. It's not a valid place for him to go. Like next turn, it's not highlighted purple, but you can still drop agents or even armies on a province, and they'll get there eventually. They're having a hard time getting Kiev. The Hungarians. <clears throat> okay. Oh no. Okay, so we probably had a lot of uh, the the crusade took a lot of men out of here. So we get some unrest. Oh no, in destroyed. I forgot to get mercenaries too. Well, that's okay. I probably couldn't have afforded to get that many mercenaries anyway. But at least. Um, at least we uh, at least we got out what we could. Yeah, let's go it on. Uh, let's go it on high. We're gonna have a battle here. We've got a uh, sword unit. Um, hmm. You know, let's get a priest uh, over in Brittany just to keep an eye on things. I guess I could send Conrad over to check out the battle. It's only a sword unit. We've got some spears. We've got some peasants. It's really nothing that great. But let's switch this up and go with some swords of our own. Uh, they won't get there in time, but uh, we could send guys from Friesland, actually. Let's do this. Let's send the mercenaries down. This is pretty safe currently. Their loyalty is even pretty decent. And now that we're in Bohemia, let's see. It was 26, now it's 2867, nice. Right, let's uh, let's get these guys up to 100. And then send you. All right, 2967. All right, the only place we can go now is Hungary. And uh, Zeal is 66%, 99% Catholic. They got a lot of men here. So we may get some interesting stuff. We may get some horse archers. Uh, they can train these really interesting um, javelin men. Uh, very good versus armor. And, you know, a bunch of other stuff. So maybe we'll get some royal knights out of it, too. Oh, they took Aquitaine. Okay, I think that's good. Okay, good. So we are not at war with the Hungarians. We were allied with them, but they could theoretically have refused. So we are welcome. All right, we are invaded by just a few men, a uh, few rebels in Franconia. So this should be not a big deal at all. Maybe I can even use this as an opportunity to kind of get rid of some of these expensive mercenaries. Uh, because assuming the crusade is successful, we're going to have to start paying upkeep for, uh, for all the guys that are in that crusade. And we're going to want to make sure we can afford to uh, keep a lot of them in service. Uh, because 
Antioch will have basically no production for us. Um, it's going to be in the middle of hostile territory, of course. We may be fighting through the Byzantines to get there, depending on how they, um, how they react to us moving through their territory. And we may be at war with the Turks, most likely on our way there. So there'll be all sorts of problems we'll have to defend uh, Antioch from. Okay, so we don't get to do anything about the weather. Uh, mounted crossbowmen and Italian infantry, and the rest is just very, very basic. Alright, so where are you guys coming from? Probably from straight ahead, yeah. We could have, uh, could have done a little bit of maneuvering, but not much point. Looks like we did do some damage with the, those uh, crossbows. Oh yeah, getting some good hits. Looks like they're kind of trying to outflank us on the right. Oh good, so they're going to have it. Move the king around, we'll do a little flank. Now swords are typically going to beat spears. But we're fighting downhill. should be the end of it. Craven or son that he is, the enemy general flees. All right, we'll just end that there. If we wanted to get our dread up, by the way, you can kill captives. Um, with rebels, I'm not sure that it really matters all that much. You may get some bad traits uh, for executing prisoners. You may get some traits that may be marginally useful, I think. Um, and similarly with this, uh, this scenario, we have to decide, you know, do we want dread? Do we not want dread? Uh, let's execute the ringleaders. It's kind of like the middle ground option. Prince Herman is a zealot because he's on the crusade. Nice. I guess that's good. Plus 20% zeal in governing. I mean, it could be a bad thing if you've got an inquisition from an enemy faction. Yeah, over 3,000 men. All right. Down to Bulgaria. Now this is the next big, uh, big hinge moment, right? Are the Byzantines going to allow us to pass? Uh, there's going to be basically no Catholic presence here, but at least we will have, uh, uh, you know, some option of getting some units. Now it looks like we've got a special character here, Albrecht der Bar. Yeah, that he must be some kind of famous uh, historical figure. So nice, we got uh, four command with him. Uh, let's go ahead, let's move him towards Lorraine. I think I may have him take over as Count of Flanders. Three command is okay. I mean, he's got really good loyalty. I guess I could wait and see if someone better, like, comes along. Let's go with another one of these guys. 862. Yeah, I mean, we don't have a ton uh, of income just lying around. Builder and Chivalrous, that's good. No really bad traits, so I guess we can get Prince Rudolph uh, up in charge here. Um, yeah, it looks all right. Our Emperor is 60 now, so his, his days are kind of numbered. Let's keep him with the mercenaries, and uh, we'll just move him... I mean, technically Franconia could be attacked by Silesia, but the, the, the Poles don't really seem interested in that at all. Uh, but so actually, let's let's keep him in Franconia. It may be kind of useful, and um, let's work on some income. 
Let's see, Saxony. Um, 240, we could get this up to two. Yeah, so this doesn't, so this gets it up to 224, but we're already at 240 probably because of this. So regardless, I don't think this is gonna add very much, the farms. We will wanna do it anyway at some point because Gothic Knights are kind of a requirement. Uh, but let's keep going with Swabia uh, because we wanna get the, uh, the Swabian Swordsman. Right, I was thinking about a castle. Let's do it, it's gonna take forever. Let's hope the Danes uh, really want that alliance with us, so they're not they're not going to uh, just attack us out of nowhere. Okay, good. We are welcome to move through Byzantine territory. Oh, interesting. Okay, so the French king is offering me his daughter to marry Prince Rudolf. That would give me an alliance with the French, but it would declare my alliance with the English to be invalid. So who is more important to me as an ally? The English or the French? Well, neither really. I'm not too concerned about either of them at this point. You know, the English don't have a lot of presence down here. They can't reinforce either of these two provinces. Um, they do have a presence up here, but you know, we're not at war with them and they're not building up forces to attack Wessex. I think the French are gonna come out on top and having another, uh, you know, princess, sure, let's go with it. We are now no longer allied with the English, but we are allied with the French. They have a lot of troops, so this is the thing. They're probably not going to be able to train a lot, uh, but they have a lot of men initially, so they may be looking for an excuse to attack us, and so uh, we want to try to prevent that. All right, bring you over to Flanders. And the crusade needs to move, let's see. Okay, we lost men here because now we're in Byzantine territory. It's orthodox. Zeal is 12%. We lost like 400 or, or so men. All right, now here we have a choice to go to Constantinople or Greece. I'm not sure what that would do. Probably though, Greece is gonna allow us to, to hop right over to Antioch. So let's do that. Constantinople looks like it's entirely uh, uninhabited, but Greece has a port. I think this will allow us to sidestep um, the Turks. We could just go straight straight there. That'd be great. Okay, so the Spanish are attacking Portugal. They're attacking North Africa. All right, Prince Lothair is another uh, heir come of age. Very good, hard sums, plus one acumen. That's gonna get better over time too. Okay, okay, it's the typical Egyptian early army, which is a ton of peasants. Got the occasional Nubian spearmen, got the occasional Ghulam bodyguards. What else they got? They got some camels, I would imagine. No, no they don't. All right, can we attack it immediately? No, we can just go back to, oh, come on. Oh, that's really, really frustrating. We lost like two, almost 300 men there. Just just taking a side trip down to Greece for no reason. Oh, come on. I really thought that was going to allow us just to jump over. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, well, hopefully this won't uh, hurt things too badly. Let's uh, keep our bishop going. To try to get in front of the crusade to see what our options look like. Okay, we've got a few men here. Let's, uh, let's move, let's start moving them around uh, over to Lorraine. We'll move some of them up to Burgundy. Prince Lothair, we're getting some excellent, excellent sons here. Where do I want him? We've already got a three-star prince up in Saxony. Um, I guess, I guess we'll just have him as a spare. He can hang out in, in Bavaria. Actually, no, let's put him, let's put him in Bohemia. I'm not doing any more building right now because I'm trying to work up our income. All right, Spanish are having trouble holding on to Portugal. Very good news. Right, we get another son, and Prince Rudolf gets an approachable manor. All right, we're getting nice, a nice little stalemate going on in France. It looks like uh, the French assault has started to peter out. 
they're not really pushing against the English anymore. The English are kind of stuck down here, not a lot that they know how to do. They are training ships, so maybe they'll do a naval invasion at some point. Uh, let's go, yeah, let's go with a town watch so we can actually train something in Saxony in case of an emergency. And yeah, I guess we'll move you up to Franconia. Uh, you can go up to Flanders also. And our crusade, where are you going to go? Okay, we can go to Georgia, Trebizond, or Nicaea. Let's see how many men we've got. 2220. We're going to be down under 2,000 men by the time we actually get to where we're going. All right, I don't think Georgia would be good. That's probably going to have to bring us... Uh, Georgia and Trebizond, we're probably going to be fighting down through, like, Rum and Armenia. So let's let's stick to Nicaea. Not sure if Anatolia is still held by the, the, uh, the Byzantines. I think they get it initially. Okay, it is. So at least we won't have to fight. Yeah, we're down to under 2,000 already. Okay. Yep, and the only choice for us is Anatolia at this point. So we're going to have to fight the Turks in Lesser Armenia and then, and then go to Antioch. Well, you get what you think is enough men on these Crusades, and then it, it just it uh, very frequently is not enough. Victor Barr, let's just double check traits here. Weak principles. Hmm, we'll probably get that guy out of here. Oh yeah, unhinged loon, okay. Yeah, you were the uh, the captain, the Duke of Franconia. Let's move you back over here. Good runner, yeah. So far that hasn't uh, caught on. But where's the weak principles guy? We can actually just retrain him at some point. Loyalty is pretty decent. Let's move him to Friesland for the moment. And uh, yeah, we'll go with uh, Keep and Curtain Wall. I am curious about what's going on in Portugal. Uh, and we'll get down to Africa too, Algeria. Let's see. We've got... Bishop in Brittany, that's, you know, I don't know that we need him here anymore. We we're already allied with the French. Uh, we can send him down. Let's keep an eye on things in the Holy Land. Uh, yep. Uh, Emissary in Moldavia. Similarly, let's, let's see what's going on in Kiev. Hey, all right. We looted Anatolia, so there's something. This crusade uh, has begun to pay for itself. We got 1198 Florence. That's just a random thing that happens. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the triggers are for it. Okay, so just really strong rebels in Kiev, apparently. Step cavalry, uh, horse archers, Slavs of various ability. Okay, well, good to know. Good to know that the rebels are holding off uh, eastward expansion by my neighbors. 1987, so we didn't lose that many men, but now we're going to go to war with the Turks. Uh, the Turks are at war with the Byzantines, so that's good. I don't want to start a fight with the Byzantines, at least just yet. They are allied with the Egyptians, which doesn't matter, since I'm at war with them anyway. And they are also allied with the Sicilians. The Sicilians may become an issue for us um, as our homelands change and uh, start to move towards the south, uh, towards Italy. We're going to get some homelands in Italy, which is always kind of fun as the, the Germans. Okay, so this is where the Almohad Caliph is hanging out. This is a very ripe place for rebellion. Portugal is typically hard for various factions to hold. All right, Danes attacking Norway. Poles attacking Kiev. Uh, 
Uh, no, they're actually not. It looks like the Russians have moved down, though. Novgorod. Nope, they can't do it either. And the Turkish have retreated. Awesome. Oh, they completely withdrew. So, we destroyed a bunch of stuff. We got 975 florins. And our emperor has died. Oh, this is very interesting. A new emperor has been elected. Heirs normally win these elections, but if there are none, the strongest general is usually elected. So, very, very interesting uh, little uh, feature of the Holy Roman Empire, which I uh, mentioned in the first episode there. We don't actually need heirs, uh, but it does make things a lot smoother if you have them. Okay, so... The Spanish are actually not in... Uh, North Africa yet but let's take a look around the map okay, everything looks basically the same more interestingly we've got lesser Armenia um, and it's time to move in to Antioch with 1908 now in terms of the terrain it's going to be hills there's no waterways to worry about arid ground so it's basically going to be desert and I don't know, man, there's a lot of peasants here, but there are a lot of, a lot of men. So there's uh, 879 here, 819, so that's 1600, 1700, this has uh, 200, so 1900. It's going to be even numbers, assuming they don't, um, they don't bring in reinforcements, which they may. But since we uh, want the cash, I may as well destroy everything here. We're going to get 300 out of that. I'll put it on very low taxes just because I don't want this to become a big rebellion necessarily, like a giant Turkish rebellion. Hopefully the Byzantines will move in or the Turks will just take it back. All right. We do have a lot of cash now um, in, the, in the old funds, but let's see. Let's go ahead and rebuild that in. And at Flanders, yeah, let's get going on a shipwright. That will be useful to us eventually once we start getting our trade network. Dane's having a hard time keeping Norway or acquiring it in the first place. Oh, Spanish moving into southern France. That's not good. We're about to lose uh, the Aragonese, I'm afraid. And yeah, we're attacking. We are outnumbered. It's, it's not quite two to one. It's like two to three, right? Two to three odds. But look at all these peasants. It's just a bunch of peasants. Uh, so all of their reinforcements, we basically don't have to worry about this at all because that's literally all it is. Um, and even their main army has a single unit of peasants. And a lot of these guys are low tier. The toughest thing is going to be, um, obviously, their bodyguard here, the Ghulam bodyguards, as well as all the archers. Now is where we get to shuffle our own reinforcements. Let's do, I had a little, do a little quick save. Um, in terms of command, so we are out commanding uh, their, their own prince, and we can decide who we want to have in our initial army, which is going to be this panel, and the order in which reinforcements will appear on the battlefield, which is going to be these panels. So we can shuffle them around, um, and you typically want like the least useful guys to appear at the very bottom of the line, right? So um, like we don't want one spearman necessarily, when like we could have a hundred Slavic uh, spearmen, Slavic warriors. Um, reinforcements come in one at a time, typically. So it's very, very, like, dribs and drabs. It's uh, pretty much based on uh, how many factions or how many units have withdrawn or been eliminated on the battlefield. So you get a certain number of units. Uh, you also will lose them over the course of the battle. And as you lose them, you can bring on a unit to replace that unit that you lost. You can voluntarily withdraw units as well. Uh, we may do that as we use up archers. Right, I think that's actually pretty good. I wouldn't mind having some archers coming on reinforcements later. These, these nine guys, though, are a little, a little weak. But the thing is, cav will come on quickly. Uh, and that can be really, really handy, especially since our cav is going to be tired. So actually, let's, let's have the archers like a little bit later. Fanatics can come on and they'll be exhausted, but it doesn't matter because they're going to fight hard. Then we'll get the Slavs and the Urbans uh, and then just bits and pieces of whatever's left. All right, let's do it. Command the attack. Oh, so exciting. Because crusade battles are do or die in this game. 
right? You, if you do not do it, you'll be stuck back at the last province uh, you took. Oh, we've got a, we've got a ballista crew. I, okay, forgot that we had that. So this is the only unit that we can actually change its placement of. Now we are attacking. They're probably going to be just straight ahead, so I may as well put these guys right there. Uh, we'll put them on uh, fire at will, and they're probably going to have barely enough men to to do anything. Let's group up everybody, but the ballista, and we can do like a. We can do what? We can do the army banner. So we can let's see. What does this do? Three line defense. That might be good. Yeah, we'll go with that. Okay, we're going to go ahead and put you guys right back where you were. And begin the battle. Yeah, they're pretty much straight ahead of us. Okay, there we are. We're getting some shots in already. Now, actually, I don't know that I really want to lead with my archers. Um, I guess they'll just screen, but we don't want to sit around and do a lot of uh, firing. We want to come to grips with them pretty quickly because it's mostly archers and light units and we don't want to be on the battlefield very long because our guys are going to get tired although this is not desert so that is really nice giving everybody some move orders. Get the Teutonic Sergeants around the left. Okay, they're hitting us pretty hard with their urban militia. Their uh, Nubian spears are flanking. We're going to have to keep an eye on our general because he may become a target. This is still firing. I'm just going to allow that to happen. Oh, I love the sound of that withdraw horn. Oh, so beautiful. There's come the gulams. Going to get them with some order foot soldiers. Gonna watch those Nubians though. They're going to try to hit our cav. Let's bring our bodyguard around. They're going to catch us, actually. Gulan bodyguards tend to be quite effective. Clear out those peasants. But I think we're going to be okay. we got militia sergeants going at them. They're down to 11. Oh, awesome. We do want to watch those urban militia. They can be a problem. Let's get our archers up, too. Reinforcements are going to start coming in for the enemy. I don't think we've lost any units, so we can't bring our own reinforcements in just yet. Um, okay. Nubian spearmen are going to be probably attacking our order foot soldiers. Tonic Sergeant's just doing great. Let's... Use them to um, keep pushing their archers. All right, I think we can ignore those Nubians and bring our general back over. There they go. Some Slav warriors are wavering. They're probably... Okay, they're right here. They're, they're good. Everything's good. Get a 
lot of guys just waiting. Let's bring them up. Reinforcements are probably going to come from right over here. All right, we're going to hit them with some uh, men-at-arms. Hit those Nubian spearmen. Down to just two Gulam bodyguards. All right, there go the Nubians. All right. I think we got him. I think that's it. Your soldiers now hold prisoner the wretched yes. enemy general. It, it, it's really it, it, it's hard to describe uh, the feeling of playing this game because if if you knew like if, if you know how the controls work, how just clunky it is to operate the battles um, to give orders how sort of slow the units are they're not like quick and responsive like they are in Rome Total War they're 2d sprites but my gosh there's, this is like there's nothing like the feeling of routing a massive army uh, in a crusade where you have to or you're going to be wiped out um, it's just, it just still, after all these years of playing this game, it's still just a really, really, uh, really holds up, that experience. All right, I think that's basically everybody. What they're going to do now is probably bring on their reinforcements just up to the line and then withdraw them again. Yeah, you can see them popping up and then going away. That's it. Now, we could kill the captured soldiers. Uh, I don't know that there's much point in that. We're probably going to get some um, ransom. If we won't get ransom, then then they're going to be executed anyway. Uh, that was so fun. All right, so uh, Antioch is now under siege, the castle itself, and uh, we have uh, we have executed the prisoners anyway. So we didn't lose, we didn't get any extra dread or bad traits. That way. All right, lots of successions happening. Prince Herman is a skilled attacker, plus one when attacking. Now, unfortunately, attacking is not what Prince Herman is going to have to do for a little while. He is going to be defending. And uh, 1642 men, we're going to have to hold off wave after wave of counterattacks from Egyptians as well as from Turks. We'll see if he's up to it. Uh, meanwhile, we've got a completely new uh, structure. Well, actually, a lot of our heirs are remaining the same. Uh, but we do have some new heirs, I believe who we may not have heard of, Prince Friedrich, Princess Kunigund, uh, because we have a new king. Our new Holy Roman Emperor is Conrad III. Uh, he is already 50 years old. Uh, he's a killer instinct. He's very lazy. He is a believer. Uh, so he will not be the emperor for very long. And when he takes over, we're going to see a big shakeup here. All of these princes uh, are going to, a lot of them are going to be removed from the heirs page. They will remain as generals of royal blood. I like this guy here. He's the younger brother of the current emperor and the previous emperor. And his loyalty is probably going to take a nosedive when his older brother dies and he doesn't take over. Although he will take over, but you know what I mean, like the other one. Um, so with a bit lower influence, our generals have now a bit lower, uh, you know, a bit lower loyalty. Uh, we may have to watch public order. We've got the Spanish on our border right now. We're going to have to decide, do we want to get involved in this and try to protect the Aragonese? It might not be worth it. We may try to use subterfuge instead. I see the Italians are down here for some reason, probably bribing Grenada from, uh, from the Almohads. Lots of very interesting stuff happening. New borders, new allies, and a new crusade possession to attempt to hold. So thank you very much for joining me in this episode. I hope you'll stick around for the next one. Until then, everybody, take care.